with King Lewis from Wang Kwan's Armory. Thank you again for asking what the difference is to a bastard sword and a long sword. Now, technically, this is technically a bastard sword, and this technically could be an armory sword. So, nomenclature can, the terminology can kind of switch back and forth. It mostly depends on the century and depends on how you're using it. So, I, well, then again, I don't have much examples of bastard sword and long sword just because they're not really within my time period. I do study mostly 16th century, kind of going to 17th century, mostly in the Bolognese sources, which we do mostly single hand, but we also do uh, spadones, so a little bit longer than a bastard sword. Uh, sorry, a long sword. Okay, so let's just look at the bastard sword first. Now, the, of course, we all know that bastard sword. It's going to be a sword that technically is like an army sword length. So right now, what I'm holding is I'm holding an 80 centimeter long, uh, well, it's a technically, it's a 15th, 16th century, a cross between the army sword, getting a little long with the palm, uh, on the handle, and with a little ring on it. So this technically could also be a bastard sword. Now, you could easily use it with one hand because it has a, usually a really light kind of um, weight to it and it's very nimble, you can do a lot of things. And if you really want, you could, of course, why they're called bastard swords because it's between the army sword and the long sword. And that's usually distinctive with the handle. It's a hand and a half sword. Half is because you get a little bit half in the handle and then you get a palm mole. So if you are noticing that you really need that extra chop, extra swing, or you lost, let's just say you are originally fighting with a dagger. That's a 16th century dagger, but that's okay. If you were fighting with a dagger and you ever lost your dagger or it was a buckler, you couldn't draw in time and you have to only use this because your dagger, your buckler is setting somewhere in the far end. I don't know. But then, if you do have to use it, you could choke it up for extra speed and a whole lot of stuff. But the thing is that, let's just say, if you are going to be utilizing that, you could technically use, just hold it by the palm of an army sword. You could do the same thing. Now, the good thing about a bastard sword is that you could, of course, everyday wear, you could put it on the side. It's, it doesn't bother you much. It's just a really nice, short kind of sword. It doesn't hit anything. You could hang it vertically. It still wouldn't bother you. You could hang it on a slight angle, and it still works just fine. So you could use a bastard sword in terms of armor combat. You could also have sort of it, no problem at all. You do lose a little bit of, of a length, but for an everyday kind of thing, for a quality of life, I do like a bastard sword, or at least in this, uh, this kind of sword, it's, it's getting to more like a side sword. It's just a really good arsenal to have with you on the side, side sword. But then again, so, Bastard Sword is mostly like an earlier century. I don't remember if I found much in the 13th century. Starting from the 14th century, you do see it. 15th century has some, and even 16th century, you could also find Bastard Sword. You can find really long swords that, sorry, long handle uh, swords with a relatively modest blade. And once again, they are very, very light. So for dual and context, would I like to carry one of these? If I do have it, of course, I'll happily dual one because they are really good length. Not bad at all. And that's one for dual. Quality of life, it's fantastic. I, I would just love to have this on me all day long. Nothing wrong with it. And of course, let's say third thing is economics and of course status quo and all the, all the above. If you do that great sort of nice enough, nice enough, whereas mine for some reason, that's the Delton uh, hand and a half and it has like a wheel palm. You could decorate it really nicely. And of course, the main, main benefit is that you could have an offhand weapon. And if you can do that, I'd really much rather do that. Now, getting into an offhand weapon, you will find yourself fighting in what we call a Y stance. A Y stance is going to be us, our, our, um, our body pretty centered to target, meaning that we are going to be fighting in a Y stance like that. So now what this means is that you will, even though you have two weapons, you have more target for people to hit you. So you're going to be fighting like that, you could fight like that, you could technically do a, a narrow stance, you could, but then again, that depends on your fighting style. 
If I were to really, really take advantage of a faster sword, I would probably still keep this on the side. I would want to ratify the narrow stance. Now, huge benefit of a faster sword is that you could fence with this one-handedly, meaning that I could, I could just go one-handed and I'm fighting narrow stance, whereas it is not if you fight wide stance. It's just more things to hit, and you lose distance. So I'm gonna face this way. Pretend that my opponent's there. If I'm fighting in a wide stance, my hand could need to go up to here. Whereas if I fight narrow stance, stay, I'm just gonna rotate my body, okay? So I'm not gonna take a move. So maximum range, uh, this is gonna be wide stance. Maximum range, narrow stance. Look at that. Much more safer. My body is at least my heart. Well, then your heart's kind of in the middle, it's not really on this line, whatever. But yeah, at least if I were to narrow sense, once again, my opponent's there. My narrow sense, I do have less things for him to hit. And the most things that I'm really projecting out from my body is mostly my hand, wrist, and arm. So if he were to commit an attack, at least I could still hit him with false or true edge while he's coming to me for an attack. So let's say I'm gonna gear my opponent now. So if we are gonna be this distance fighting like that, it's a lot more safer. I still have my outside guard, I still have my inside guard, I could also do hanging, and even then, they are all very, very narrow stance. So for fighting, if a single-handed fighting context, I probably would pick a more single-handed kind of sword. So now this kind of get into the later century, whereas in a much more later century, we are gonna find Let's say, I'm gonna randomly grab this picture because I don't have anything. So, it is a much, it's a very similar kind of blade, and of course, we were gonna get into a rapier. So, I, my rapier is sitting right there, I couldn't get it right now, but whatever. So, if I were to fight single handedly, I'd rather use a very nimble and light sword and just fence. Now, Spiturin is a, Spiturin is 200 years later, and that's so, actually, three or four, even three or four hundred years later. So, well, I just ignore that. But what I'm trying to say is that would you rather fight a uh, narrow stance? Let me put that back. Now it is. So yeah, would you rather fight narrow stance or would you rather fight wide stance? Now, why am I getting into wide stance? It's because now let's look at the long sword. So this is kind of like a long sword. It's a 90 centimeter long sword. Some long sword can get up to a whole meter. Then again, three foot of three foot of sword is not that bad. You may even find longsword up to 42 inches. I think those are later stuff, and then we get into S stocks, which it's mostly anti armor and it's more. You can actually use it with cavalry, which is very interesting. It's a short lance. But in any case, now getting into longsword is if it was a one on one kind of fight, what would I rather use? I only have one weapon. Well, obviously, I've got a longsword because now I have much more reach. My blade, at least, is longer. It's much more nicer. I can hit him with more force, more power, and I can have more wide and bind to a lot of things. You will notice that some of the moulinets, which is the, the turn, can get a little tricky, whereas one hand is a little bit easier. But the huge advantage is that even though you are, sorry, you are gaining 10 centimeters, this is 90 centimeters, that one was uh, 80, you do get 10 centimeters more reach, but don't forget your handle. Your handle is much, much longer. That's almost like 30 centimeter of length. So compared to choking up your sword with that and fighting wide stance, you're now fighting with a much longer handle, meaning your wine and bite is much more stronger. And your thrust is a lot more longer. So a lot of techniques will require you to use two, so two hands. There are some techniques that most people often forget is that you can actually do one-handed thrust. So you can also hit, I'm not gonna swing here, but if you do hit, you could also go for a leg cut with just one hand, or you could go for a high cut with just one hand. You could also thrust with one hand and retreat. As long as you are moving with your sword, it's not that bad. You are more prone to getting your sword batted away if you do use the one-handed stuff. But for the added reach, once again, so my opponent's there. I'm gonna be here, one hand reach. I am in some narrow, I'm going all the way up. So my body, with the turn of my body, turn on my whole posture, and using the pommel, you do get much nicer thrust. Now, 
Yeah, it's a one-time thing, but hey, if he's dead, he's dead. Once again, steel is hard, body is fleshy, he's gonna die. Just don't miss. If you do miss, returning your sword is not that bad. So, another thing is that if we are gonna be, let's say, going into the context of armor combat is, if you are having the need of half swording, you know, you're very much happy to have sort of a with a long sword because now you get much more reach, much more control, and essentially it's a crowbar. Both you could whack him in the face with murder stroke, but I don't know, it's just not really pleasant. If you hit something really hard with a sharp metal thing on your hand, it's not a good time. You're not gonna deliver deliver a good hit, but each of their own. So in any case, now that's coming from a sparring context. Can you use this with an off hand? Can you now have access to a parry there or some sort with a longsword? I mean, yes, you can still use a longsword with a parry there. It's fine. You are going to be wise stance. Now, this is a very interesting thing. It's I find a longsword balance very similarly and at a very rudimentary level. If you don't know much about longsword or rapier, they kind of feel the same. If you have longsword in one hand and a rapier in one hand, and you hold it by the, by the cross, they, they feel the same to me, at least. Meaning that you could do very thrusty motion with a longsword with a paring dagger. But when it comes to the cutting, or even the winding and binding, it does get a little tricky. I do find out with a faster sword, it's easier after you bind them, and you, let's say, I'm gonna perform parry with two hands. Parry, and his sword getting caught, I could grab his arm, pull my sword back, if it's short enough, and I can still stab the guy. That is only if your long sword is a little bit on the not crazy long side. But then again, there are people that could perform really good uh, grapple, really good disengage, and a whole bunch of stuff. It's just, it just takes practice. Whereas if you have a shorter sword, it, the entry level learning technique is a little bit easier. So in that case, that's mostly for for the fighting context. For fighting wise, which is better? Eh, probably a longsword. Comfort level wise, what, what would I like to fight with? Probably a master sword. Just because I like fighting narrow stance, so people can hit me less, and I don't mind when a sword it's within let's say four to six inches of difference. Me, sorry, jump back and forth from Imperial and Metric. What I would say is that if, if it is within around 15 centimeter, I would say the sword blade length doesn't matter too much. As long as your body posture, your distance is correct, you could bait your opponent in for you to use a shorter sword to fence. I have used, let's say, well, not this one, of course, because that's this, I think it's a vintage, I, don't, I still have no, no idea what this thing is. Uh, let's say the vintage side sword. I, am, I have used very short um, 31 inch, I don't know what that is in metric, I'm probably going to put it in the bottom. But then again, I have used these sword up against two handed sword, and I fare pretty well. I don't find anything wrong with it. As long as you are, let's say, properly parrying and doing your stuff or parrying, you could use false and true edge to parry. As long as you understand a good distance management, 15 centimeters doesn't matter too much. Unless you're the guy who will stay back and just keep poking people. But, and if that's the case, if you're going to be staying back and poking people, then you probably want, example, let's say, Let's say if my cat burger right here was a really long blade, I would probably want the biggest hand guard and just stay back and just keep tapping people in the hand. Why? Because it wins. And the, do you look ugly doing it? Oh, subjective, he's dead. So, last point about long swords, I do find it very tricky when it comes into wearing it. You do have a really long thing sticking out against from you. You could. You could actually get around that by wearing a little higher. So yeah, it's gonna sit close to you. You will see a lot of lash hand, um, two hand like swine hand or bind hand or whatever they call it. Those great, bad, massive sword. You could see actually. One second, let me grab that now. So let's just say I'm gonna grab, let's say, a great sword. 
Of course, this is an overkill example of what I'm trying to show. Yes, but what I'm trying to say is that if you are carrying a long sword, you could technically carry it like that. You will see a ledge kind of holding like that, and you will see later period where their long sword is being held like that. Because it's comfy and it's not gonna get anywhere. It's not it's not that different from holding a master sword. Or you can just kind of hold it like, you know, whatever you want to do, like match connect stuff. I don't know. But in any case, so there are, I think this is going to the 15th, 16th century, where you will find scabbard on long swords has no um, has no strapping and stuff like that because they're meant that your servant hand your sword to you or you literally just carry your long sword in your scabbard and you just kind of hold it around because it's well it's a status symbol if you have a long sword you're very cool knightly and stuff like that right rather if you have a single handed sword it's different it's, some people perceive you as more like a peasantry level but then again there are really nicely decorated single handed sword that looks wow fancy example like um Philip the Handsome, Philip the Handsome, 16th century, kind of early 16th century, and what is he using? He's using a hanger, like a master kind of thing, or like a, meaning a single-handed, peasant-looking sword, and he's a freaking archduke. Like, come on, like, it, at that point, it's going to be mostly looking at how nicely your sword is being decorated, and how comfortable you're at holding it. So, in any case, end note is that, compared to, let's just say, a faster sword and a long sword, which one would you want? Depends. It depends on your fighting style. For me, what would I choose? I'd probably choose a faster sword just because I feel more comfortable about using a narrow stance, having more freedom of movement, and if I'm going to be, let's say, going on a reenactment, let's say an adventure, or if I'm going to be running in a vault, or even if I'm going to use it for a duel, I'd probably still pick Ness because I do find it more comfortable to me, a little bit more nimble, and just overall a little bit more, uh, once again, comfortable. And if I really want, I probably would just rip my jacket off and use it as an offhand weapon, like it, let's say, an offhand cloak. And I will still use that and fight with the sword just fine. If I lose that, then at least I can choke it up and use it wherever I need. Whereas a long sword, it's, it's a little bit more specialized as a very, <sighs> specific military weapon. You are supposed to use that as two-handed. Now, let's just say, great, in that case, if you only get one thing, one thing only, would I use a long sword? Sure, but would I rather go with a longer one? We're in a context of 15th century. 15th century, let's just say the blade is only this long, it doesn't get any longer, that's why I'll still use it. But let's just say if I were to choose a long sword, I probably would get like a spidome or something like that, like a little, something a little bit longer, maybe 42 inch, instead of, let's say, a 36 inch. But then again, if that's my restrictions, well, it's totally up to you, really. Once again, I will still, if, if I cannot use anything else, right, if I cannot use anything else, I can only take one or the other, and I'm gonna fight to the death, probably long sword. But if I'm gonna be using it as an everyday kind of object, where most Renaissance medieval people would use, where I would have an offense to do a whole lot of stuff, I would probably go with an army sword. Once again, you could even repair. You could grab onto another person's sword to thrust and cut with ease. Whereas long sword, you may have a little bit hard time doing that. Am I biased in this? Well, obviously I'm biased because I like single handed swords. But then again, do other people have other experience where they train mostly long sword? Would they choose long sword over single handed sword? Possibly. And which is why it's going back to the very beginning of time in this, the whole video, not, not the actual time, but the beginning of the video is, what is your training, what is your preference, and do you like to fight narrow stance or wide stance? So, a couple of things for you to think about, and if you have any questions, feel free to send me a, like, send me a message, put a like on the comment, or uh, put a thing on the comment, or whatever you want to talk about, and I'm very happy to discuss. So once again, this is the context of, let's just say we're staying within 14th, 15th century, the reason why I'm restricting this is because if we jump a little bit up, even let's say late 15th century, we get really long, 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 long sword, which is like, like graceful level long sword. So that's kind of unfair, because we're talking about two swords that's kind of similar with a longer handle, slightly longer handle, and a slightly longer blade. And I think that's, and I think it's fair if we stay within 14th, 15th century. Well, in that case, once again, thank you so much for asking about the question between uh, faster sword or long sword, and I hope this answers your question.
or at least give you something to think about. Thank you. Cheers.